Hi, I'm Brian Fife and I'm a digital illustrator. I often refer to my work as a digital collage. And um, a lot of the people, well, most of the pieces I do are a combination of uh, hand drawn elements, uh, texture photography, and then illustrator and Photoshop work. And with the texture photography, it's often just uh, either a photograph of like a peel you know, peeling paint or rusted metal, anything that just has like textural interest. And um, if it's something I can put on my scanning bed, I'll actually lay that on there and scan that as a high res image to use. And that could be something like fabric or tea stains or coffee stains. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at a few of the samples of my work here where I can show you where some of that's in effect. So a piece like this, um, I will start with some hand-drawn elements. The elk here are inked by hand on a separate sheet of paper. And once I've got that drawing you know, to the point that I like it, um, I'll scan it in. And then it becomes a digital asset that I can use later on in the Adobe Creative Suite. As far as the photography, you'll see things like uh, vintage wallpaper. It's this texture behind the moon here. Um, these are carrot roots that I've laid against a white background and then I'm able to isolate that and again, make it a digital element that is later brought into Photoshop. And then a lot of the color, the contrast, the more painterly aspects, well, I'll do with brush work and some of the tools that you'll find within the Creative Suite. So let's take a look at a few of those. So here's another example of it. Um, you know, the trees are hand drawn here. Here's a case where I've used some coffee rings and tea stains to create just kind of a, a weathered element um, on top of what is otherwise very graphic shapes. I mean, if you work in Illustrator, you know it can be a very, very clean, very graphic styling, but these textures kind of add that warmth and nuance to the piece. This one's another good example of kind of found object photography. These are um, bathroom tiles, and you can see the grout and kind of the unevenness of the tile. Um, the bulk of the house here has a wood grain texture on it. These um, kind of rusted metal textures here along the side of the column there. And uh, more hand drawn with the trees, some of the isolated shapes like the cat or the skull. And they kind of, sometimes I'll work a bit more graphic. I'll, I'll lean a little bit more into Illustrator than I will Photoshop. And um, that really just depends on a piece by piece basis. Um, if it's something like that haunted house that is more um, shape oriented, I'll build it in Illustrator so they're, bas they're the basic bones of the composition. I don't even care what color these shapes are at the moment I'm doing that, the Illustrator work. It's really just a means to isolate each and every shape and then add those textures, add those gradients, add those selected colors. And as far as um, kind of laying out or conceptualizing the pieces, I'll start with thumbnail sketches. And the thumbnail sketches aren't necessarily very detail oriented in my case, but they, they build the basic shapes and the basic compositions. Um, there are hand drawn elements in a lot of these pieces. The fox head I rendered in graphite um, and then scanned that in to use it with the rest of the digital elements. Uh, the, my one thought when I talk to students is uh, use everything. Um, if you like that sketch in your sketchbook and you've tried to sit down and you know, hammer it out with much more care and much more detail, but there's something you're losing in it, like the energy of the piece, I say use the sketch. Use, uh, if you have a favorite photograph that has some really neat element, isolate that and use that in your piece. So really just use everything at your disposal. Hello, my name is Jason Felix and I'm a visual artist uh, working in entertainment industry, so video games and films and also all pop culture, comic books, and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my process. So, the catalyst for everything that happens with my work has always been Photoshop. So Photoshop is the unity of traditional versus the digital. Um, so a lot of the process that I do nowadays, um, I'm pretty sure if you see, you can see uh, different images, is that I usually start with a sketch. Uh, traditionally, I'm always sticking with my foundations, and then from there I scan it in, and then layer in um, not only uh, digital with Photoshop painting, but also photographs as well. And the photographs is a combination of, I would say, textures I would find maybe even online, go to Flickr, go to Google and just do image searches. Um, but mainly if you can get your own photographs, um, it usually is a, is a better way to work because you have a better idea of what you want to use the photographs with. Uh, but I do have to implore that Photoshop is the catalyst for everything that, that I do work with. And I do think there's a, very importance about 
making sure you know how to draw traditionally. I can't stress that enough. Some of the best artists in the industry you're gonna find that's work at Marvel and DC, including working on the, all these amazing movies, always are amazing drawers. You take away the computer, they can still do it. So I think it's very, very important that um, you still level up with your traditional skills with Photoshop as well. Hi, my name is Eric Wilkerson. I'm a professional illustrator. Uh, Sci-fi fantasy uh, illustration is my specialty, my speciality. And um, I just want to show you a little bit about my process for digital illustration and traditional illustration. So first off, I work primarily in Photoshop when I do my digital art. I start off working on a Cintiq, that's a 24 HD, but I mean if you don't have a Cintiq you can also use a Wacom tablet, the Intuos line is just fine. Uh, I, I start off working out sketches for, for my work uh, digitally and then from there I'll, I get reference for my models, uh, I'll, I'll sculpt a um, maquettes for like alien, any alien designs or anything anything that doesn't exist that I need to know how light hits the form and then from there I will draw a full uh, finished uh, drawing for my digital painting uh, just regular round tool round brush tool in Photoshop and from there it's just a step-by-step -step process of building up the layers in, in, in Photoshop I start with I start with my color layer on a set to multiply mode. For anybody that knows Photoshop, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And with the drawing uh, layer above that, once I get my colors in place and I know I have a general idea of how the illustration's color scheme and the composition is going to look, I begin painting over the, uh, the original drawing layer and I can continue building up and building up until I get a finished illustration. And this is an example of a book cover job that I did recently. It's all digital. And I started out by sculpting my reference for the alien. And I uh, shot photo reference of my, uh, my main hero and then drew it all out in Photoshop and then painted it and this is the final cover. So I tend to go back and forth between digital and traditional illustration and when I work traditionally in, uh, in oil paint, my process is essentially the same. I draw it out, transfer the drawing to a board and then begin painting up the, painting the illustration going from thin to thick and uh, from dark to light or light to dark and building up my colors and, until I get uh, what I what I want so this is an example of one of my oil paintings this is about 30 inches by 40 inches and again I took the time out to sculpt the reference of my alien before uh, starting the finished finished painting and this will give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say that I sculpt my reference. So this is a 12 inch tall physical sculpture done in Super Sculpey that you can buy in your craft store, in your, you know, your neighborhood. And from there I was able to do a finished painting. So that's a little bit about how I work. If anybody has any questions, you can reach me through ericwilkersonart.com. Just email me and uh, we'll chat. All right.